Hi there, my name's Aaron Lanchman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is EC3084 Signals and Systems. Today, I would like to take a look at a paradox involving capacitors. The most commonly stated paradox consists of two capacitors and a switch, but I'm going to present a paradox involving a voltage source, a single capacitor, and a switch. It will involve the same basic issues and I think better fit with the overall themes of this class. We'll say that the switch closes at T0 and the capacitor has a capacitance of C, the voltage source has a voltage of V0, and we'll measure the voltage across the capacitor like this, let's call it VCT, and we'll measure the current flowing in a clockwise direction using a variable I. And we're going to assume that the capacitor starts discharged. Okay, concerning this switch T equals zero, let's say that the voltage across the capacitor is capital V naught times UT, where that UT is representing this closing of the switch. We'll come back to this point several times. Well, what about the current? There's a single loop, so that's going to be the current through the capacitor, which is going to be equal to C times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. And let's see if I take that derivative, let me put a little subscript C there to be clear. I'll wind up with V naught delta T because that's the derivative of the unit step function. Okay, so what I'm particularly interested in here is what is the energy delivered by the battery? Here, I'm going to be deliberately sloppy. So I'm going to put a warning here, sloppiness ahead. I'm going to be deliberately sloppy to make a certain point. So we'll come back to this. I just want to give you a warning. And if you watch the lectures I did about the unit step function and about the delta Dirac function, you should be able to see where I'm about to be sloppy. Okay, so the energy delivered by the battery is going to be this voltage V naught, that's the voltage, times the current through the battery, which is going to be the same as the current through the capacitor, so that's C V naught delta T. And then I need to have dt at the end here. So this is all going to give me C V naught squared. And then if I integrate this delta function over its full range, that's just going to give me one. All right, but what is the energy in the capacitor after the switch is flipped? Well, according to our usual sophomore circuit theory, or even your freshman physics class in college, it's going to be one half C V naught squared, because V naught squared is going to be the voltage across the capacitor after this switch is flipped. Okay, so I have C V naught squared. Here I have one half C V naught squared. Where did the other half of the energy go? It looks like we violated conservation of energy. So let's see if we can come up with solutions to this paradox. Okay, so here's one candidate solution, and that is to add some resistance. So we've assumed that these wires don't have any resistance in them, and real wires do. So let's add a resistance R. All right, so now what is the voltage across the capacitor? Well, this is now going to be your standard charging capacitor. So this will have a form of one minus e to the minus t over our time constant RC, whole thing times a unit step function ut. Oh, and I have to be careful to remember to multiply this by v naught. All right, so what about the current? So the current is the current through the capacitor, which is going to be c times the derivative of this. So that's going to be v naught. And then I'm going to have E minus T over RC when I take the derivative. The minuses cancel. And then I'm going to have all of this over RC times UT. And then the Cs here are going to cancel. And technically speaking, when I take this derivative, I'll also want to take the derivative of UT. That gives me a delta function. But when I plug in T equals zero here, this whole thing equals zero. So I'm left with this.
So I might as well just go ahead and erase this C here and erase this C here. So what about the energy delivered by the battery? So as before, I'm going to integrate over the voltage of the battery, which is V naught. And let's see, multiplying by all of this stuff here, I really have V naught squared, e to the minus T over RC. And let me put the one over R here out in front, DT. And I can encapsulate this UT, this unit step function, by replacing the lower limit on the integral with zero. All right, so I'll have one over R with a V naught squared sitting in front. And then let's see, I'll have E to the minus T over RC. And then in front here, I'll have something like one over one over RC. And then I need a minus sign. And then I'm evaluating this at T equals zero and T equal infinity. All right, so the R's here cancel. And when I plug in infinity, I get zero. And when I plug in zero for the lower limit, I wind up with just one. So let's see, moving the C up here, I'll have C V naught squared. And interestingly, this is the same energy delivered by the battery that we just computed for the naive case where we didn't have any resistance here. Now, we still have the case where half of this energy is in the capacitor. But the new thing that happens is over the course of this process, some energy is going to be dissipated as heat in the resistor. So let's look at the energy dissipated by the resistor. Let's write that as I squared times the resistance. And so we'll integrate that. And technically speaking, let me start this as going from minus infinity to infinity because I want to be explicit about incorporating the unit step functions. Okay, so let me pull the R out in front here. So what am I integrating? Okay, well, I'm going to be integrating this V naught squared e to the minus 2t over RC all over R squared. So that's the current squared. And when I take into account this unit step function that clips the lower limit at zero. Okay, let me write this as V naught squared over R because the R here cancels with one of these squares down here. Okay, so now I'm integrating this. So how about I'll say one over two over RC, then I'll have e to minus two T over RC, evaluating this between T equals zero and T equal infinity. All right, so the R's here are gonna cancel. I'll have a C in the numerator, so I'll have C V naught squared, and then I'll have this whole thing divided by two. And then when I evaluate this at infinity, that gives me zero, and when I evaluate it at zero, it gives me one. All right, so here's where the other half of the energy went. Half of it lands in the capacitor, and half of it was dissipated in the resistor. So this is one way of resolving the paradox. But there's another way of resolving the paradox that doesn't involve adding any resistances. You can still consider this wire as perfect. And that's to slow down the switch. So we assume that the switch works instantaneously. So here what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the voltage across the capacitor doesn't go from zero to V naught right away it actually slopes up like this. So it's gonna land at V naught, but it's gonna start at zero. And so in between, what we'll do is we'll say it's V naught T over capital T naught, where capital T naught is the amount of time it takes for it to finish climbing all the way. Well, what's the current? Well, it's gonna be the derivative of this times the capacitance. So. In this region out here for t less than zero, and in this region out here for t bigger than t naught, it's going to be zero, right? Nothing interesting is happening in there. But in this region in between, it's going to be c times the derivative of this function, which is going to be v naught over t naught. All right, so now what is the energy delivered by the battery? 
So I'm going to integrate between zero and T naught because this is zero outside of there. And I've got C V naught over T naught, but then I'm also multiplying it by this here. So I'll actually have V naught squared over T naught squared whole thing times T dt. And let's see, so I'll have C V naught squared over T naught squared. And then I'll have one half t squared evaluated at t equals zero and t equal t naught. So let's see, when I plug in the t naught here for t, then the t naughts cancel. So I wind up with c v naught squared over two. All right, so this time compared to the previous examples that we've done, we have half of the energy delivered to the battery which matches the energy that winds up in the capacitor. So there's another solution. And there's a whole bunch of other proposed solutions that all involve different additional assumptions. The paradox isn't the original problem, really. The paradox is that there are so many varied solutions to the problem. The underlying issue goes back to this sloppiness in how I set up this integral. This V naught should be multiplied by a UT. And if I think about this then, well, I have an integral where I have UT multiplied by delta T. And way back in lecture two, I told you that anytime you set up a scenario where it matters what UT is, at t equals zero needs to be treated with suspicion. This integral of ut times delta t doesn't actually mean anything. So essentially, according to your standard rules of circuit theory, basically this is simply not a proper circuit. It's as absurd as, say, trying to put a three volt source in parallel with a four volt source. Of course, you can do this in real life, because all of these batteries will have some sort of internal resistance, but that internal resistance is probably fairly small, so things here are going to get hot. But from the rules of circuit theory, if we're talking about theoretical things, this is simply not a valid circuit. Similarly, it's not valid to say, oh, I have a one amp source in series with a two amp source. This doesn't mean anything. It's scribbles you can put down on the paper, but it's not a valid circuit. Similarly, this setup is not a valid circuit. And the circuit that people draw when they talk about the two capacitor paradox is just not a valid circuit. That's it. Before we close out to give credit where it's due, this lecture was inspired by the book Circuit Signals and Systems by William Siebert, particularly problem 11.21 on pages 361 to 363.